There we go. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, I am Sean with 8-Bit, and we have a special guest today. Mr. Chris, the dad joke president, is coming on board on our channel today to kind of tell his journey, uh, share some personal information about how he started growing his beard, what it means to him. If you have been on our website or on our email list, follow our socials, you know he uh, wrote a blog for us. So we wanted to bring him on, kind of give him a voice, him a platform to share more information on that blog and and read the blog for you. So welcome, Chris. What's up, dude? Hey, Sean, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. What's up, everybody? I appreciate you so much doing this. I know this has probably been several months in the making um, with the blog, got that dialed in. And then, you know, I, I had been thinking about it for a while to like, you know, what would be really cool is is to have you on our channel and to just have you kind of dive more into the blog and, and your personal journey. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So uh, again, for those of you who don't know me, and I hope you do at this point, uh, <laughs> my name is Chris Perez. Uh, I live in North Carolina uh, with my wife and my three boys. Um, I, and I, I am just uh, i like to live the dad the dad life the dad experience uh, you probably have seen all of my dad joke videos which i love doing um it's really great because i used to drive my kids crazy with it now they're just like huh you know they they come to expect it and they're getting kind of into the age where they're understanding the jokes they find them funny and sometimes they tell me jokes too which i love um but you know i i have lots of other you know interests and experience I, obviously part of the beard community which i i love being a part of uh, a big baseball fan, um, avid reader, uh, did kickboxing for a really long time until I earned my black belt in that. Um, so I was just trying to, you know, stay busy um, doing all kinds of different things. Life is an adventure, uh, I like to say. So, you know, I try to, to find those new and interesting things. That's very cool. I, I didn't know uh, kickboxer too. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I can, uh, I can throw down if I need to. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids get old enough that uh, like they're gonna have to get really old to take you on, right? To beat dad now. Is that yeah, what it is? yeah, yeah. They 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 got some work to do. Yeah. So um, so I'm not sure when exactly our paths crossed in the beard community, um, but you were supportive of so many companies uh, in kind of our kind of our small niche community where we help support each other. Uh, very huge small business supporter, but we have uh, more of a c connection and it came out a little bit more in your blog about both of our kids uh, being heart warriors. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll get into a little bit more on that. But what I want you to do now is if, if you can, is we'll give you the platform here. And if you just want to read um, your blog and I'd love to dive in some of the details on it uh, afterward, we'll give you a, you know, you know, a few minutes here and we'll get to your blog or read your blog that you have on our website for um, everybody out there. So I am going to remove myself and then I'm going to give, give you the floor, my man. Thanks, Sean. Okay, here goes. So I, I often refer to December 17th, 2012 as the hardest day of my life. At 5 a.m. that morning, I had a hand over my seven-day-old son to a team of surgeons that would operate on his heart in an effort to give him a chance at life. I whispered softly to him to be brave, and then I had to walk away with the hope that, with the hope in my own heart, battling an indescribable weight of sadness and fear. My son made it through that grueling eight-hour heart surgery and the associated two-month hospital say. In fact, he's had three open heart surgeries in total and has been through a tremendous amount of challenges, and he is absolutely my little miracle. To be honest, the early years of his life were also challenging on me. There were times where I felt like this was such a constant uphill battle, and I was always feeling exhausted, which translated into me being impatient and sometimes snappy. I eventually learned that these were signs of what's called compassion fatigue, which is the idea that your compassion is like a muscle, and when you're giving so much to care for others, it can at times exhaust itself. One of the important things I learned about dealing with compassion fatigue is to be kind to yourself and to talk to yourself the way that you would talk to your friends. This includes giving a small gift to yourself every day, something that is an act of self-care and self-kindness. 
in those early days, that was an evening cup of coffee while sitting on the couch. It didn't matter what kind of day I had. I just knew that if I could make it to that cup of coffee, everything was going to be okay. In 2020, I started to grow up my beard. And like most people, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing at first. Eventually, through lots of trial and error and tons of YouTube videos, I started to figure out how to properly care for my beard and figure out the types of products that work the best for me. And it was like night and day. Today, I have lots of oils and butters and combs and all that stuff. And taking care of my beard has become an important part of my self-care. Because if it looks good, I feel good. And if I smell good, I feel confident. Caring for my beard has become the gift that I now give myself as part of my awareness of compassion fatigue, which I learned never goes away. So if you have compassion fatigue, it means you're compassionate, but you also need to make sure to care for yourself. The most amazing bonus about being on this beard care journey is the group of friends I've gained through the beard community. They're, these are amazing humans who don't just support each other through grooming recommendations, but through life's ups and downs too. We have a lot of fun too. We laugh a lot and celebrate each other's wins, and it's a great support system to help me be my best. Today, my son is 11 years old and in fifth grade, and I'm constantly amazed at the things he's overcome and the things he's able to do. I absolutely love being his dad. It's the greatest honor in the world, but I can't help him be his best self if I'm not trying to be my best self. And whenever I take the time to put a good quality product in my beard, it might be a small part of my day, but it's a big step toward being the best version of me. So cool, dude. That's so cool. And, and you. <clears throat> you know, just learning, like, so just going through that, when I, when you sent this to me and I read this there, like the parallels we had with our son, um, were there with the heart surgeries and, um, you know, your heart warrior, but the be brave, like, like that sticks with me because we, we have a sign up in, um, his, his old room, which Harrison has now that's be brave. You know, it's a light up sign and it's just, um, that, that connection there with your story, just about like those obstacles you have in your life and trying to overcome them and, and, and wishing that or, or comforting your family through those, those hard things. Um, but, but, and then compassion fatigue, I had never even heard of in our, you know, our, this isn't about my story, but like in our whole journey with our son, I had like, nobody had ever really mentioned compassion fatigue. So when, like, I read that, I was like, holy crap, like, like, wh like what is this? And like, and, and you explained it a little bit in your vlog, but um, would you mind going into more detail on that about really like what it is? And because I, I know I've experienced this, mm -hmm. and I guess I, I just didn't never had a name for it. And I'm sure that there's other people that are going to be watching this and, and I've read the blog. I've had a lot of comments on it about not knowing really what it is or what it's about or how to really uh, deal with it. Yeah. So um, compassion fatigue is something that it took me several years to learn kind of into the journey with my son. Um, and it was just, uh, I, I had an opportunity to listen to a chaplain. So I work in healthcare. And so one of our chaplains was giving a presentation about compassion fatigue. And it was like one of those moments where I felt like I was the only person in the room. Like yeah. I, I, it blew my mind, like blew my mind. And the way I like to describe it to people is sort of like to get, you know, open up and tell really a real personal story, um, kind of that, that be brave concept, right? Uh, you got to yeah. be brave to kind of open up too. Yeah. Um, my son's third open heart surgery was one of the, the most difficult, you know, he was a toddler, he was about three years old, you know, understood a little bit more about like things like pain and being afraid. And so kind of talk to him about what he was going to have to go through was really, really difficult. Um, the surgery went okay, just fine. Um, however, at some point in that that process via whether it's the surgery or the recovery, he actually lost oxygen to his brain for a period of time. And I remember it was it was Father's Day um, that year where I got the chance to hold him for the first time post surgery. And when they handed him to me, his arms just, just flopped. You know, they weren't working. And I was just like, something's wrong. Like something's yeah. not right. Um, and and it turned in it turned from just a surgery recovery to surgery recovery and being on the rehab unit and, you know, relearning how to walk, relearning how to, how to grasp and do all those things. And, um, 
you, you know, luckily, you know, for young kids, you know, they, the neuroplasticity in their brain, you know, makes those connections really quick. And he yeah, walked, they are really he, resilient. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that kid, that kid walked out of the hospital. It was amazing. <laughs> you know, and, but it was, you know, that's we were awesome. there. That's, we, that's so scary as a parent, though, because it's already a, a huge, a major surgery, right? Yeah. Third yes. heart surgery. And then you're just, you know, you know, you know, we were praying just everything would go fine. And like, and then you get to hold your kid finally and there's a little bit of relief and then you're like, Oh no, something else, mm -hmm. something else is wrong. Yeah. yeah. And it was something that, that we weren't familiar with. And so, you know, we were there at the hospital a good three months. Um, and you're talking, you know, you're running out of PTO at work, you know, you're, you're tired, you're just yeah. tired of being there. You know, the, the food is only so good that you can, you know, like all those like little things that they start to add up. You know, and as guys, we tend to kind of, we, we pack all that stuff down. There's lots of Absolutely. jokes of how we pack all that in. And I remember there was a, a day, I don't know where we were going. It was really random. I had, it was me and my wife, and we had the three boys. We were in the van. We were driving somewhere down this little two-lane road um, near our house at the time. And I look in a rearview mirror, and there is this car. It was a big, like, Cadillac with the, uh, the eyelashes on the lights. <laughs> And it was like riding our bumper and it's a two lane road. Like there was nowhere for me to go. Like I yeah. couldn't like change a lane or anything like that. And this lady was just, and I was like, suddenly like I could feel all the stress from like the surgery and the recovery and the, this and the, that. And, and now this woman's riding my bumper and I could feel like just the stress and the blood pressure in my body rising and rising and I'm gripping the wheel and I'm starting to tell my wife, Hey, listen, this lady's probably going to hit us. And we need to start getting ready. I mean, we were going up to red lights and she's coming right up to the bumper. And then, then it finally happened. I stopped at a red light and she drove right up and just tapped very yeah. lightly, yeah. tapped my bumper yeah. and everything up until that moment erupted out of me. I burst out of that car and I'm screaming at her obscenities and I'm yelling and I'm like banging on her window. She went lower. Oh her window. I went, ballistic and this yeah. is a major intersection i know everybody saw me i'm surprised it's not on youtube somewhere and then i got back in the car and 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 i i drove off and i realized like something's wrong here you know like yeah. this 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 is not and then i realized like it brought me back to that conversation about compassion fatigue and what it is is that when you either work to care for people whether that's a loved one or you do it for your job or you're just a compassionate person it's just like a muscle that you work out in the gym. If you go to the gym every single day and all you do is biceps, eventually it's going to get tired and your biceps are going to get worn out. You got to give them a break. Yeah. Same thing with your compassion. And at that moment, I was caring so much and I was doing so much and I was just willing everything to go well that that one little moment caused me to just explode. And, uh, and I realized like, yeah, this is uh, my compassion is done. It is gone and it yeah. exploded. And sometimes that happens. But most of the time for us, you know, it's a it's a snappy comment. It's isolating yourself for others. It's being persistently negative. It is not being interested in the things you used to really be passionate about and just saying, like, eh, I don't care about that anymore. And that's where those things start to to show up. So, you know, I share that story because it's 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 ugly and it's kind of like a realistic portrayal of kind of like what it looked like. Dude, like I have a similar story to that and I don't, and I knew that I would, we were just super stressed and mine happened in the McDonald's drive through you know, they have, it's already a stressful situation because they have the two lanes there, yeah. right? Yeah. And then people aren't being nice to each other. Well, it was a very stressful time with our lives with our son, Wesley. I think we were Sunday, it was after church. We were rushing to some other sporting event, just trying to get some chicken nuggets for the kids or whatever. And, you know, I think Wesley had a blowout before we even went in. So I'm changing outfits and him in the car. And then we get home and I, you know, I probably have a Dixon that's like a button down Dixon at this point, right? And we're in line behind somebody and they're just really cautious and not moving forward, right? And three, four cars go by in the other lane. Like they had already ordered and are not moving oh. forward. People just keep cutting them off. And I lost it in the drive-through. Just similar to, the, I, I like, 
not banging on anybody's windshield, but that was my breaking moment also where I get out of the car and my shirt, you know, I'm, I'm, my shirt comes unbuttoned and I'm wearing a four t-shirt underneath it. Like <laughs> this big burly guy with all of us, like almost hulking out wearing a Thor shirt. And I go in front of the other cars and I stop the other lane. Like, and I'm like, I think the guy thought I was going to drag him out of his car because he knew it. They, they know what they were doing. And this little <laughs> nice lady in front of me who just wouldn't move forward was, you know, I, she was a little scared. I was like, man, it's your turn. Please move forward, <laughs> you know? And, and that was kind of like my boil over moment there where I am usually super calm and collective, but like you were saying, like, everything just keeps building and building and you have, you don't have a release. And at some point, like you are just exhausted and you boil, you know, you boil over. And I think, you know, everybody has that limit and, and trying to figure out the limit, but what, you know, I didn't realize what I had. I knew that I needed a stress relief later on and stuff, but <clears throat> excuse me, what you realized was that you had like that compassion fatigue that, um, I had not, not heard of, like I had said. So like, you know, everybody has those moments and mm -hmm. it's about trying to realize it and then move forward with it. Like you have done in, you know, the things that you did. So the cough, right from your blog, the cough, you mm -hmm. started with the coffee and, and drinking the coffee. And then you moved on to more beard care and self care. And it's, um, you know, they talk about it a lot when you're advocating for your child or a family member, the, um, you also have to have self care for yourself because it's 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 exhausting. It is an exhausting um, situation to be in, and people that have been in it for years and years, it is um, it takes a toll on you, and it, it, it's it's very tough. So yeah, absolutely, and uh, and 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 it is true. You know, we we put so much into our care for others, and you know, sometimes you hear from people, and it's like. Well, that's what a man does. That's what a dad does. And it's like, yes, but you also, you have to make sure that you're going to continue to be there for your family, you know, and not to get yourself, you know, give yourself a heart attack or get thrown in jail yeah. for being like the incredible Hulk all the time. Yeah. You know, and the truth is, it's just like when you get on an airplane, right? And what are the warnings that, or, or the safety things that they give you? It's like when those little masks come down, put it on yourself first, yep. then you help somebody else. And compassion fatigue is really that kind of thing is... You can't fill somebody else's bucket if yours is empty. And the reality is when you put so much emphasis into caring for others and trying to help them, and that is your focus, which is a good thing, Yeah. Um, without doing the same for yourself, eventually you're going to have those moments where you're going to burn out, where that compassion yeah. stops. And so that, that thing that I learned about kind of giving a gift to yourself was really that idea of, you know, it was kind of a two parts, you know, first one is, would you talk to your best friend the way you talk to yourself? And I think most of us, if we were honest, would be like, mm -mm, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like sometimes our self-talk is really ugly. Right. Yeah. And, um, and the other is, you know, what are the small things that you could do? You know, sometimes we think like self-care needs to be these like huge things and it could be really small steps. And I'm a big coffee drinker. I love coffee. And at that time, you know, I was tired all the time. I barely slept and I was up all hours at night. So I was like, well, you know, having a cup of coffee at night is no big deal <laughs> at this point. And yeah. I, re and I remember, you know, my wife at the time worked, a, worked an evening job. And so basically like I'd come home from work, you know, we'd, we'd spend some dinner time together and then she'd go off and work throughout, you know, part of the evening. And so, you know, kind of uh, getting the kids settled to bed, cleaning up and all those things. And after all that was done, I'd make a cup of coffee. I'd sit on the couch. Like sometimes I'd watch a movie. Sometimes I'd stare off into space. Yeah. But like for me, it was just that, that very, uh, you know, moment where I knew that I, that this is something that I was going to do every day. I was doing it for me. And even on the worst days where like I'd have a rough day at work, like I was busy all day and I couldn't accomplish any of the things. And I sat in traffic all the way home, you know, and my son threw up everywhere because he was on a feeding tube, you know, and, and like, I just knew that it, it created like an intentional focus for me. Like, okay, Chris, get to the coffee yeah, and you're going to have a built in moment where you could just be like, Whew. Yes. And learning how to breathe, learning box breathing and kind of all those different things, you know, mindfulness, meditation, all that different stuff, you know, combined with that, like it, it really helped me a lot. And so I, I love kind of telling people um, all about it in the hopes that 
you know, there's somebody out there that could use it too. So do you find yourself um, more calm now? Because whenever you're on screen doing your, you know, TikTok jokes and stuff, it's, you have a very calm demeanor, you know, you're laughing a lot. Is Do you think that identifying your compassion fatigue and setting those, you know, those goals of where to get to has kind of changed your outlook on kind of your evolution, I guess, from where you were and super stressful spot. And I know that you still are going to have stressful times in your life, but you know, that doesn't come across when even you're talking here today and, you you know, um, and and in the short videos you do. Yeah. So I, I consider, you know, compassion fatigue work kind of like another tool in your toolbox. Um, and you know, we go through phases in life, you know, I've always was like, you know, kind of like the class clown as you know, like, no surprise <laughs> to anybody. Um, you know, always, yeah. I always joked around. I always had a sense of humor. I was always really chill. You know, my mom used to, it drove her crazy. She was like, it's like, you don't have a care in the world. Yeah. She always used to say, yeah. um, but you know, when you go through life, it's phases, right? You, 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 if you go to college or you get your first job or you have your first kids, right? Like it's sort of. You know, you have to kind of adjust with those types of things and kind of sometimes your personality adjusts with it, too. And for us, as you know, Sean, you know, you got to get dealt this like thing that no one prepares you for. There's no training for it, you know. And and so you spent like your time like freaking out like there's there's you're in this medical situation and there's beeps and there's machines and there's people coming in and out. And, And and that there's nothing in life that's like that. And suddenly you're thrown into it. And so now I, you know have this component of life that if you kind of dwell on it will swallow you up right and it'll it'll eat up you know who you are who you've been and so it's just another tool to say i realize that those things are going to happen and there will be days where i'm just overwhelmed with stress there are days where i'm triggered by stuff you know um i work at a hospital where the the children's hospital where my son gets his care is right attached to it and sometimes there's days just driving up to it and I see that building and I see the window of the room he was in and I just, I, I just, I know it's going to be a tough day. You know, it yeah. just is, it just happens. It is what it is. It's no yeah, it is and the triggers. It's the triggers, right. And they, they show up and, and, um, unexpectedly, right. You just see something or somebody says something and all of a sudden you're like, it brings you back to a memory and, um, you know, even when we were in the hospital, you, we tried to you walk around a children's hospital and it is just um, just really eye-opening, I think, when you spend an extended time there of all of the battles being faced by families and these innocent children that um, didn't ask for these situations to be put on them fighting for their lives. Um, and I, you know, and I, my, I always tried to make somebody's life a little bit better because the most stressful time in the hospital were the first few weeks that you're there. If you're in a long-term stay, those are going to be the most brutal because your whole life is upended at that point. Um, you're adjusting to new routines. You have no idea what the heck's going on with your kids. Uh, and so, and you could always tell the families, uh, going through that. And, you know, it was a reminder to them, listen, um, you know, if you're here for, need to be here for a long time, these first few uh, days, week, week or two will be the, the toughest, um, to a point that you will face because you're getting used to everything. Like that elevator ride up when we ride the elevator, the heart floor is the fifth floor, I think at children's here. And, and like, you just talk to the, you know, I, 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 t- I tend to talk to everybody, you know, my family hates it sometimes or always joke about it. Like we're in line at Disney talking to a stranger about whatever. Right. But just that human connection I love, um, and, and, and talking to people like that. And, um, that, that helped me get through a lot, but those triggers are there and they, they just, they just spring up and then you have to have a plan like you have to deal with it on what you're going to do. If you're at a party and something happens, you need that outlet, a pre-planned outlet on, you know, okay, well, if this happens, then we, we need to leave, you know, because I, I need to collect my thoughts and stuff. So it, it's real. And I think it affects everyone Yes, because there's something in everybody's life that is a stressor. Yeah. Um, and, and one and thing I, I learned too is that one thing I learned too is, is, you know, 
by no means, I mean, you know, for anybody watching this or listening to it or, or whatever, you know, my experience and Sean's experience, you know, ours might be very similar and you might be sitting there and you might say like, man, I've never been through that stuff. Like there's no way I'll experience compassion fatigue. You will. Yeah. And the good news is, you know, it's not a contest, you know, my <laughs> difficult and you're difficult. Like, yeah. like it, mm -hmm. what do we win? What kind of prize is that? You know, like, like your difficult is your difficult. And the good news is that one thing that I, I want to make abundantly clear to everyone is if you experience compassion fatigue and you will, um, don't feel bad. Don't be hard on yourself because you can't experience compassion fatigue without compassion. Like yeah. it, if you don't, that means you're probably not compassionate. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother <laughs> like, video. Um, but you, if you do experience it, that means, you know, there is something there that you are compassionate. If you just, it's just been exhausted and you need to kind of do the things to, to kind of help you out. A lot of times, you know, like you said, you know, to have those tools in the toolbox and there's, there's a couple things that, that for me have worked, you know, one is, is, is breathing, you know, look up a bunch of different breathing exercises. I have things like the insight timer on my phone, which is a really great, like mindfulness and meditation app. Sometimes like if I can't sleep, I'll put in headphones and listen to different kind of like sounds or sleep meditations. Um, really even helpful too are those times in the hospital there's so much noise uh, yeah. in a hospital which i know you know yeah. um but also you know one of the most difficult things that we have i think especially as guys um is to be vocal about the things that we're going through and like you don't have to go online and be like this is what i got going on but like have somebody that you talk to or even be okay with eventually just saying i'm kind of triggered right now right yeah. like i'm i'm kind of yeah. going through this and and when I learned that once I started to be honest, like the days where I can go into work and be like, hey, I'm a little, you know, I saw this and I'm just like really having a hard time today. That most people are like, hey, I got it. That's cool. You know, I understand. Or they, do you need anything? All those types of things. If yeah. we tend to hide it, then it becomes like, oh, what's wrong with him today? Oh, he's grumpy or, you know, he's not involved. If you're watch out, <laughs> you know, but if you if you start to, you know, then you you never know kind of what what conversations, um, you know, might open up. And the thing is too, is it's, it's really powerful to develop those connections, right? Because, you know, coming across your company, Sean, it was like a Facebook ad or something. And I was like, Oh, it looks really cool. I had no idea your story, nothing about that. Yeah. I know I found out about that, like way after I became a customer. And the thing that was amazing about it was kind of like you sharing your experiences allowed me to feel heard kind of allowed me to feel like heard through just a, a small business that that I participated in. And so it was yeah. like, even though I know lots of people that are going through what I've gone through and those types of things, it's it's, it's really, really cool just to have that connection and be like, hey, I've been there too. You know, I under, you know, I, I understand and to have those those things where you can talk to people. Um, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to reach out. You can reach out to me. You know, I'll be happy to, to to chat and those types of things. But but don't keep quiet. Don't isolate it's different from like, I want my alone time. That's everybody could use that. But when you start to purposely kind of pull yourself away and isolate, um, you're going to find yourself in a dark place really, Absolutely. really, really quick. Um, yeah. You know, so be aware, be cognizant of if you're trying to do those things and reach out to somebody, especially if there's somebody that you know, that's not going to be um, judgmental. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. That's great advice. Just, just that whole uh, self care that I think, um, it's still a fairly new concept for men, even where we are at today is, is being able to take care of yourself. So then you can take care of your family better. Um, and, and when you're in a better place, then the people around you can be in a better place too. And you're just more equipped to deal with that. Yeah. I, I love, I love this, um, this blog that, that you wrote. Um, it was just, you know, just dealt with so many things I think people were unaware of even about themselves and and um, and how to really deal with that, that self-care of that coffee or that beard product. So really cool. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, and just I, I, I feel your story very, very personally because of of the road that that I've been on in my family, too. So it's been awesome. Thank you for allowing me to share it, Sean. And thank you for for yourself being open um, and honest with your journey um, and for connecting with me. I really appreciate it. And I hope that people listening to this um, can find some help and find some peace too. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, we're going to get a little bit more 
information about you and some of your likes here just towards right. the end. Some rapid fire questions. Nothing, nothing too tough, right? We um, pretty intense topic, the compassion, yeah. fatigue, self-care and all that. So does you, you said a little bit this beginning beginning and my honestly my wife is more of a dad joke person than i am and i'm kind of like the point where i'm like oh my gosh like, <laughs> like am i supposed to really laugh hard at this or not um so you guys would get along great i feel like awesome but the the best part about that is she's passed that on to our kids so now our 15 year old is telling jokes like that and has been for years and now our nine almost 10 year old is is starting to to tell jokes and and um just it's just you know small entertaining so does your family ever you said they rolled your eyes a little bit but do they ever are they just like come on dad really like now oh yeah oh yeah so it's funny my oldest who's 13 right now i started really on the dad joke stuff with him you know i'd be driving him around and it, it was all for some reason randomly the easiest dad jokes to come up with are like pirate themed because you can put like an r or yeah. anything <laughs> yeah and yeah. oh my gosh, he would talk about stuff. He was like a toddler, two, three years old. And he would say something and I would turn it into pirate and I would start cackling, laughing. And it upset him so much to the degree where he would, he would get, you yell. Sometimes he would cry. And I was oh like, my oh God. my gosh. Um, now he's 13. And yeah. sometimes I catch him laughing. Like, and he tries to hide it. Like, yeah. I catch him and he turns away and he's trying yeah. not to laugh. Um, <laughs> And then a lot of times he's just like, that was awful. That's the worst one you've ever come up with. Come on. <laughs> and it just, it makes me laugh now because now we have like that, that relationship where, you know, you can, you know, he really starts to kind of understand the jokes and you know, yeah. he critiques them. Um, but yeah, they, my wife is like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> enough. And the, the twins are funny because sometimes they'll share jokes with me too. A lot of times it goes like completely over their head. Um, I'm going to tell them anyway. So yeah, I think, right. they, I think they're just used to it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. It's nice that you have that relationship, though, that he at least critiques you, right? He's like, you know what? This could have been better, Dad. How about oh, he always he thing? always says they're bad. He's like, that was awful, and I'm like, no, it was really <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, um, and since we are the theme of our company is gaming, what are your three favorite games of all time? Wow, uh, three favorite. Uh, easiest one is the OG Legend of Zelda in the gold yeah. cart in the gold cartridge. Oh yeah, I, I got. I, yep. Man, I I remember it blew my mind. I think I have it I right up that. here. Yep. Yeah, I went over uh, uh, my dad's coworker's house, and I had just gotten a Nintendo. I only had Super Mario Brothers. It wasn't even the one with Duck Hunt. It was just Super Mario <laughs> Brothers on the oh, wow. cartridge. Yeah, and uh, I don't know how I how I got that one, but I did. And uh, he's like, hey. I, I heard you got this new uh, Nintendo thing. And I was like, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I was like six. And he says, well, I, I picked up a game for you. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if you like it. And it was on the top of his fridge. And he grabbed it and handed it to me. And it was Legend of Zelda. And it opened it. It was gold. It was like, yeah. yeah it was good. amazing. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, other no, ones so that I. My favorite. Ones, one of my favorites, too. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. just just a classic. Yeah. Um, uh, another one is uh, GoldenEye, Nintendo 64. Yeah. Um, Classic, just, yep. I mean, you think <clears throat> about being able to play multiplayer with other people, and that was just the, Four. <laughs> the greatest Four thing, yeah. the greatest thing yeah. ever. I don't think I got sleep whenever I had friends over and things like that because we play, we play GoldenEye all the time. And kind of sticking with Nintendo 64 um, was Mario Kart um, yeah. there too. It's just because I, I sort of got more into the enjoyment of playing games like with people like with friends um and having them over and we would do like super smash bros and you know mario kart and golden eye yeah. we do that for hours and it was that's awesome awesome yeah those are again those like before like the online gaming yeah. that was it man like you yeah. would have we used to have like mario golf tournaments on our 64 yes. with buddies and like we had a gold jacket we would pass <laughs> between each other if That's like awesome. they won the tournament yeah there's special rules on what you could who you could use and all that because obviously like metal mario could just smash the ball the farthest and stuff yes like all right we got two more here three favorite movies Okay, three favorite movies. Um, the Sandlot it could be a series could be a series. Yeah. So the Sandlot is definitely um one of my all time favorites. Yeah. Um, I could just <laughs> I just watch that movie um all the time. Oh man, I'm trying to think like favorite movies. Um, 
I really like, uh, I mean, Shawshank Redemption is classic. Yeah. I can always sit down and watch that one. Yeah. Um, and what I, I'm going to throw this one in there. I, I wouldn't, I don't know about favorite of all time, but this one just sticks in my mind because I watched it and I can't seem to get it out of my head because I loved it so much was uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, that is a crazy movie, dude. Yeah. That is a crazy movie. Yeah. It's just wild. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like action and like, weird kitschy kung fu and like drama and family yeah. drama and i i sat there just enthralled by this movie and i couldn't stop i couldn't stop thinking about it afterward like i thought about it a lot and i think to me that's a really good that's a sign of a really good movie so yeah totally cool those are awesome those are awesome all right this should be easy three favorite desserts oh man um apple well, pie you know what well you know what maybe we should make this coffee no coffee okay. Okay. Do coffee instead of desserts yeah. or what so, so three favorite coffees yeah You're, are you still a big coffee drinker oh yeah yeah absolutely man i got i had like a coffee advent calendar that i bought myself <laughs> for the holiday <laughs> and, uh, i was really excited about it okay so three favorite coffees um i will go with um do you want to do like drinks or where i buy them from or whatever, whatever. you want to do man what All do right, you cool. what do you reach for the most what three coffees do you reach for the most all right so me personally um my favorite coffees i really try to support um local roasteries so i live in the charlotte north carolina area we have a lot of really great like uh local um roasteries um that i try to support um one is called night flyer roast works uh really really excellent coffee um the other one's called night swim coffee um, and the third one is called uh, Enderly Coffee, which every time you buy their coffee, they they support kind of a, a foster care uh, program. So, oh, cool! Uh, but I can I can name like a billion different yeah. you know, places here that I love to go to. There's a shop called Cup Lux that's a drive through shop, and it's it's like 45 minutes from here. And I swear, sometimes I'm like, do I have enough time to run? I really there? need some self care <laughs> yeah. today. I was just like, I could go. Really? It's kind of close to my job, and I'm like, hey, no. uh, if I no. could run to the car, I could get there. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's great. That's great. Well, okay. So we are, it looks like we're approaching about 40 minutes here. So we'll wrap it up, man. I, I so much appreciate you coming on today. So if you guys don't know, uh, where can people, uh, find you TikTok, Instagram, what, what's your handle there? Just, yeah. So it's the same handle on both. It's Chris okay. underscore the underscore per resident. Um, so come check me out. And uh, it, it's going to be dad jokes and nonsense. So if yeah. you like that, you're going to find a happy place. Yeah, dad uh, jokes but, and short uh, un- beard beard company unboxings now on IG, right? Are you posting those on TikTok also? Or no, I just leave them to IG. That's kind of just become something that I do kind of for fun. I don't I don't know if that's going to be a long term thing, but I yeah. I have fun doing it. So you know, it, it might show up here and there. Yeah, very cool, man. All right, thanks so much. Thank you everybody for hanging out, and we will all chat later. Appreciate you, brother.